Right now, though, I want to pick up on a breaking story which seems to involve an American betting company called Etain and the TAB and the New Zealand government. And my understanding is that the government, Etain is going to pay the government $140, $150 million to take over the running of the TAB and the 24 sports organisations it allows or it facilitates betting on. Why has the government sold the operations of the TAB, a business that it owns, to an overseas company? Why this asset sale? I am not sure. I was thinking maybe the National Party's racing spokesperson would have a better idea, so he joins us now, David Bennett. G'day, David. How are you? Good morning, Sean. How are we going? Very well. So what is this all about? I'm trying to make sense of it. Yeah, well, we haven't got the finer details either, so the only people really privy to it are the TAB, the Minister and the Three Codes. Uh, they've gone on a little bit of a tour around the country uh, trying to sell it to the um, stakeholders. But essentially what it is is the TAB will stay as a, a separate entity. Uh, it's going to enter into a joint venture with Intain, which um, is a major international betting agency primarily out of the UK, very strong in Australia oh, it's as UK, well. is it? I thought it was US. It's UK. Okay, yep. Yeah. And um, effectively, they, they make a payment... Uh, to the TAB uh, to, to go into this joint venture um, and then they uh, basically run the operations um, in a manner which would enable you know, better returns for the, the racing sectors and sports sectors. As more, a result betting. Of, more betting, uh, David, does that mean? Well, it's, it's yeah, partly more betting, but partly also their technology and efficiencies and things like that, that that's what they're selling it on. Yeah, OK, all right. And the $140, 50000000 they pay gets distributed to the three codes? That uh, well, that, that, it's about a, it's, there's two separate things. There's a payment to the, to the, um, to the, to the TAB yeah. um, for the um, joint venture arrangement, and that'll be um, used basically to increase stakes and things like that. Yeah. Uh, the $150 million they're talking about is a separate amount, and that's um, the amount of betting that we lose overseas that goes to other agencies other than Intain, at the, or, or they could be through Intain at the moment, um, where the New Zealand government doesn't take a slice or the TAB doesn't take a slice out of the um, payment, it's, uh, a betting made overseas. So there's about $150 million we're losing overseas. About 90% of that is sports betting, and um, I mean, a majority of that are things like the EPL, where people are you know, betting on yeah. Arsenal against Southampton. Um, and so we don't um, get any share of that. Um, yeah. So there's no money going to problem gambling as a result. And also the sports codes miss out. So, uh, you know, like if there's a, a rugby game between the All Blacks and Argentina and Hamilton, well, then the rugby union can sell <laughs> of, of that to... Um, one of those international companies so that yep. they can have this around the board of and that they get a paid either a, a, an information fee or consumption fee yeah. depending on how many people use it but when these New Zealanders betting overseas we don't get anything at the moment so that's oh we lost him I think he was good on him bloody good on him look I'll take the rig back I, I hate to interfere with a hungry child uh, but we're getting the story slowly. It all sounds very complex and rather, well, irrelevant, doesn't it? I just hope, and I want to ask him, does it affect the pokies at all? They're the worst form of gambling, I think, the pokies. Just terrible. Um, Sean, yeah, police cars going wild in Whangarei this morning. Eight of them in a chase one hour ago and spikes deployed. I'm glad it's only reported climb that's making the figures look worse. Cheers for a great show. Ian, look, if you're from Whangarain, you know what's going down, you know anything about what appears to have been a crime spree overnight, please give us a ring. Um, Sean talked to Winston Peters. He used to be Minister for Racing. Yes, but he's not now, so why would I talk to him about this? Oh, David's back. Sean, Rolf must have been hit by a motorcycle before he recorded that song. That's from Mike the Lettuce Farmer. Does that mean you're a greenie? Um... 
day, but as I said, I didn't want to interfere with a man who was doing baby duty. Oh, no, no, it's all good. She's very good at the same time. But um, did you, so that 150 million is basically yeah. lost revenue. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's compensation for, for lost revenue. I'm still trying to understand, David, why this saves the racing industry or makes anything better just doing a JV with an overseas firm that's got better technology than the TB, TAB can economically develop for itself. Well, the, um, well, that's why we're not privy to the final details, but um, we, don't, we don't know the, the actual numbers that they're talking about. But what, what essentially is happening in the TAB is that they're reducing the stakes to racing. Like They cut 15 million out. Um, a few months ago, yeah. and that really hurts the ability for the sector to, to continue. And they're looking at another cut as well. Uh, they just um, can't seem to be able to run it efficiently, uh, and Fentain would bring different betting products uh, into the market that potentially would um, increase the revenue to the, to the racing yeah. and to other sports codes. Yeah, I know, having looked at some reports that Winston Peters had prepared in his time as Minister of Racing, that, for example, the average New Zealand punter... Well, the average New Zealander bets half what Australians do. Half. Well, it's probably... It'd be well less than that now. Um, like, I think it might even be a third now. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Um, and that's not the um, not necessarily the future of the industry, though, uh, if you look at what's happened in racing in um, places like Ireland and Australia, uh, the Irish are probably the exemplar, and they've gone for a very strong breeding industry. And, uh, you know, they've basically uh, become the breeding source for Europe. And in New Zealand, we've got the same opportunity with Australia. We can let the Aussies do the $5 million Melbourne Cup races. Uh, what we need to make sure is our breeding industry is sustainable, and that's actually going to be the future because... It's a primary-based industry. It's what we're really good at. Um, we've got some of the best um, bloodlines in the world, uh, but we need people to keep investing in that. And if you don't have yeah. uh, some relativity in the stakes that you get at the small races in New Zealand, yeah. then you, you, there's no incentive for people okay, to go you, the Okay, you lose that kind of feed-up. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. you lose, lose the bottom of the industry, therefore you lose, yeah. lose well, the top. Not Will to any of this, David, right? affect... Other gambling like pokey machines? Well, apparently in the deal, um, there's a removal of some pokey machines if the um, uh, geo-blocking that we talked about earlier goes through. Yeah, um, now I that's the other thing. Yeah, well, let, let's just revisit that because I want to be clear. Another part of the deal is that the government would make it impossible for you to bet online with non entain entities in New Zealand? Yes. It, it would be a ban on online betting unless it went through the TAB slash Entain? Yes. That's a hell of a... That's got to be worth more than 100 mil. 150 mil is how much we're losing now in the market. Now, that's going to go up over time. Yeah. As people use that more. Um, but that's, that you probably only had two options in that area. One is to do this. Um, or to try and pay, get those other companies to pay a fee on re monies received yeah. from New Zealand. Uh, now that's what we want to see when they go th when they actually introduce this to Parliament. And as I say, they've been sitting on it for five years. They haven't done it, so um, it'll be interesting to see how they actually put it together when it comes through. All right. Um, yeah, I, I, I get the feeling still, David. We don't have a real idea about the strategy around this. Well, um, the, the industry is on its knees, to be honest, and yeah. TAB is on its knees as well. Look, I'm and, sorry, uh, David, is gambling an industry? Yes, well, racing is an industry. And Racing's an industry. industry. Yeah. And, but um, people, people don't pay to go and see horses because they like them. They pay because they can gamble, David. Well, some people like them, and people still pay to go to the rugby because they like it. Um, but they still gamble on the All Blacks or, or the Chiefs. I you know? have never gambled on rugby. Yeah, have you gambled on anything? Oh, I go to the races maybe once every two years. Yeah. And I buy so, a lotto um, ticket five times a year, David. But it's just not a vice. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I'm going to call it a vice. It's not a vice I have. Yeah, but some people enjoy it. And also, you know, it's part of, um, you know, it's, it's the racing industry is an industry. It employs 14,000 people. It's over $1.5 billion worth of revenue. 
Uh, and um, you look at our sports, uh, the, the huge um, businesses, you know, they're, they're, they're not as amateur as they used to be. And uh, there's a lot of betting goes on those because people enjoy to bet even though they're not watching the game. Uh, people will bet on the EPL um, yeah. even though they don't see the game. All right. All right, David. I'm sorry, I, it's yeah. just something I do not care. I imagine people like sticking their fingers in, in power sockets. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> never, <laughs> it's never done it for me. I thank you very much indeed for joining us at short notice, David. Um, and thank good luck you. with the good luck with the childminding. That is David Bennett, the National Party spokesperson on on racing. I'm not sure things are a whole lot clearer after that. So we're going to give these guys in Tain. The rights to run the TAB because the TAB is crappy at running itself. That will put more money into the prize pools for races. It will provide a fillip to the uh, racing industry. Some money will be distributed to the sporting codes that allow betting. And as if the deal goes through in its entirety, we will geo-block. We will make it illegal to bet online in New Zealand with anyone but Entain. The TAB slash Entain. And Entain pays a bit of money for that. How do you feel about that if you're a gambler? How many of you are gamblers? I never got it. Are you a gambler, Ben? Do you go to the TAB or anything? No, it's never done it for me. I, that, I, really. think I don't understand in, sports enough. No, once in a moment of boredom a couple of years ago, I tried to set up a TAB account and it came to thing, enter a PIN number. And I they try to suck you in, don't you? With and the I said, screw that. And yeah. I just didn't, and I haven't gone back. Well, I'm like you, though. I've, I've gone to the races a few times, but that's different, isn't it? Because it's an event. You, it's it's all around the... Yeah, it's a social the, the gambling, phenomenon and the gambling. I'll tell you what, pokies are the worst. And I'm kind of concerned that pokies may be tied up in this. Pokies are a social cancer. Um, and the highest... Here's an interesting fact. The highest concentration of pokie machines in New Zealand, guess where? Guess where, where would you put, where do you think you'd put the highest popular, uh, concentration of poker machines, Ben, per head of population? I'd go you, down you'd, south. No, would you put it somewhere where people were rich or somewhere where people were poor? I'd put it where somewhere people were poor. Okay. I'd go down south, I'd say maybe... Uh, not Timaru. No, no, no. I'll tell Am you I way is. off? Hamilton. It's Tokoroa. Oh. One of the lowest pop, uh, one of the lowest incomes per head of population anywhere in the country. Yeah, that makes and sense. And Tokoroa has more bloody pokey machines sucking the lifeblood out of the people who live there than anywhere else in the country. It is an absolute travesty. You're right. Someone got it right. Tokoroa, well done. Uh, that's Paul. Tokoroa, highest number of pokey machines per head of population in this country. An absolute bloody Travesty. Um, Sean, geo-block, get a VPN, solves that problem. Yeah, this idea of geo-blocking, gambling and everything, I just... Oh, let it go. Um, Sean, hopefully the geo-blocking does not prevent us from betting on the US presidential elections. Okay. Um, so what do you think of the idea of geo-blocking your ability to gamble online? 